Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying God Loves His Image Bearers, Bible Bits from Exodus. In this session, we'll be looking at Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13, God's view of human life. A developing human baby on day one, the day of conception, all 46 human chromosomes are present and life begins. On day six, the embryo begins implanting in the uterus. By day 22, the heart begins to beat with blood. By week five, eyes, hands, and feet begin to develop. By week six, there are brain waves. Mouth and lips are present. By week seven, eyelids, toes, and nose are distinct. By week eight, all body systems are present and bones begin to form. By weeks nine and 10, fingernails. The baby sucks its thumb kicks, curls its toes, it bends its fingers. And then week 11, the baby can smile, begins to breathe amniotic fluid. This is all within the first trimester, the first three months of human life, when most abortions occur. Abortion is clearly, absolutely clearly, the killing of a human life. In Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13 declares, you shall not murder. The Hebrew word for murder is ratzak, which means to dash to pieces a human life. Separate from adult women every 30 minutes in America. This is separate from adult women. Every 30 minutes in America, at least 22 teenage girls have an abortion. Let's consider for a moment human life from God's perspective. First, Human life is sacred to the Creator. God's Word clearly teaches that human life is precious to Him. The Sixth Commandment reveals that it's God and God's intention to protect, protect human life. He has a plan for each life, and He wants everyone to respond to His redemptive plan. Life is the focus of divine protection. Genesis chapter 9, verse 6, whoever sheds man's blood by man, his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God, he has made man. God intends to protect human life because people are created in his image. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Human life is sacred because it bears his moral and spiritual likeness. Each person belongs to God, and he alone has the right to determine matters of life and death. Lowering the value of human life is sin. Life is the focus of a divine plan, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. 
<clears throat> because God has allowed people to participate in the procreation process, some forget he is the primary participant. No life occurs without his involvement, and he has a plan for every person to indiscriminately terminate life at the beginning, at the end, or any point in between is to disregard God's purpose and plan for the persons he has created. Life is the focus of divine redemption. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Sin entered and brought death to the human family. In the face of sin, God placed such a premium value on human life that he revealed to Adam and Eve his intention to provide redemption, and with it, the hope of eternal life. The indiscriminate ending of a life through acts of violence, abortion, or euthanasia devalues human life, which is so precious that Jesus redeemed it with his own life. Second, human life is a trust to the individual. Life is a gift from God to each person. The prohibition of no murder means no individual has the right to determine life, including his or her own life. All decisions made about life, even before a person is born, should consider that all life belongs to God. Life is a miracle entrusted to every person. Psalm 139, verse 14, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, <clears throat> and that my soul knows very well. Conception is more than a human function. It's an event in which God is involved. Verse 13 states, For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. Creation of life is a personal, marvelous work of God. To terminate life at any point from conception onward interferes with the miracle God has entrusted to each person. Life is a divine gift to each person. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have from God, and you are not your own. The Bible teaches that life is a gift from God and that life is a stewardship for which he will hold each person accountable. Because we're stewards, not owners of our lives, each of us will be judged. Jesus expanded the sanctity of human life as expressed in the sixth commandment. Jesus taught that wrong attitudes are as dangerous as wrong acts. Then third, human life is a stewardship for the community. Romans chapter 13, verses 3 and 4. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same for he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Only God has ultimate control over life and death. He chose to grant some authority over life and death to the community because taking a life affects the whole community. The taking of life is never to be an individual decision. God allowed for a life to be taken only if a person committed a crime that is a threat to other individuals or the community. Individual choice to take a life 
always has consequences. King David killed Uriah, and as a result, he lost his ability to rule effectively. In fact, the community is obliged to protect life. Killing innocent life is to be prevented. Pretending ignorance is no excuse. The taking of life is only to preserve the community. Capital punishment is reserved for threats against the integrity of society. In the Bible, there were at least 16 crimes that called for the death, for the death penalty. They were premeditated murder, kidnapping, adultery, homosexuality, incest, bestiality, disregard for parental authority, a cursing or striking parents, offering human sacrifice, false prophecy, blasphemy, profaning the Sabbath, sacrifice to false gods, magic and divination, unchastity, and the rape of a betrothed virgin. All of these were capital offenses. All of them called for the death penalty. These crimes were considered threats to individual lives and the welfare and survival of the community. Abortion is murder, premeditated murder. Murder is a sin, but all sin can be forgiven if confessed and repented of. Second Chronicles chapter seven and verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Any true transformation in our society must begin with God's people. Make a commitment to stand up for life, for the sanctity of human life. You think about that. You think about that hard and seriously, and you have a great day.